This will be the final part of my sharing about our experience moving to Saudi Arabia. It is more about our discoveries and activities here after settling down. Once everything at the new apartment has been set up, we are settled down. We could focus on other aspects to enjoy our time in Saudi Arabia. There is a wide selection of nice Middle Eastern food in Riyadh, such as Turkish, Lebanese and local Saudi cuisine. I personally enjoy the Arabic bread the most, especially when it is served warm. My husband enjoys the various types of meat. Indian and Pakistani food is very common due to the large number of people from these countries. Though Chinese restaurants are available, we found the food pretty disappointing, as they are not authentic yet expensive. When living in Sydney, Australia, we have been used to very good quality Chinese food. I knew that there would be no alcohol and no pork in Saudi Arabia, but didn't expect that alcohol is not present too in the things we use, such as mouthwash, wet wipes, and hand sanitizer. While going to restaurants in Saudi Arabia, there are two entrances, single and family. All men arriving alone are expected to sit in the single section. Only men who arrive with their wife or any other matured female relative can enter the family section. Women can only sit in the family section. If there is no family section, there is nowhere for women to sit and eat. At the family section, seats can be covered with curtains. Why? Because Arabic women will remove part of their headgears while eating. I read some news dated December 2019 about ending gender segregation in restaurants. Somehow, many restaurants we have visited still implement this. Gender segregation has also been observed at the King Fahad National Library. There are areas specific to men and women. We are not supposed to see males and females sharing a table. In Saudi Arabia, I learned a new type of weather, blowing widespread dust. This is what I saw from home when widespread dust was blowing. So far, we don't buy or rent a car in Riyadh. For work purpose, Pakistani driver was hired to drive my husband to work and back. Only two services per day are required from the driver during weekdays, and he is free to pick up others at other times. The cost is similar to using Uber services, and it is much reliable. By having the same person every day, who knows the way and has the permit to enter the company compound. Besides, he is very punctual. Less time is wasted in waiting. After a few months here, we are now familiar with some local culture. According to my Arabic friends, Saudi Arabia produces the best dates. My husband has enjoyed different types of dates, which are usually served with Arabic coffee in the dala. Apart from that, we like mokara and the smell it produces. We have tasted Saudi cuisine a few times. The portion is always huge. We have to take away and eat for a few other meals. These are some useful apps shared by the Saudi government during the curfew period. We haven't used any of them because we do not tend to order food delivery. However, I have been using other apps extensively, which have been previously mentioned. During weekends, we usually try to have some outdoor activities or explore somewhere new. Hiking, playing golf, camping at the desert are pretty common.
we have also visited some local fresh markets. Museums in Riyadh are very worth visiting too. <laughs> How much is this? Fifth. Fifth. Ah, same. Same, same. Ah, what? Flying to other cities within Saudi Arabia or the neighboring countries is easy. Saudi is the national carrier airline of Saudi Arabia, based in Jeddah. If you are after a budget airline, there is Flynas, a domestic and international low-cost airline. I have visited Egypt and Kuwait by flying both of them. To wrap up, I would like to share my biggest surprises as well as the parts I need to get used to. Firstly, Riyadh has exceeded our expectations. We did not imagine it is such a safe and well-developed city. When public transportation such as metro and buses come in place, it will be even better. Secondly, even though most of the museums in Riyadh are either free or charge a very small fee, they are truly informative and well maintained. Thirdly, they are more interesting culture and nature than what I have imagined, and I'm eager to explore more after the current curfew is lifted. Until now, I'm still not very used to the gender segregation in Saudi Arabia. I tend to forget about the separation of male and female, or enter a restaurant from the wrong entrance. I have underestimated the weather here, which is much drier than in Australia. I have always been missing my comfort food, and the good ones are not available here. I used to think perhaps I should train myself to become a better cook. Unfortunately, some essential items couldn't be found here. Finally, thank you for your time, and I wish the sharing has been helpful. If you have any question, feel free to leave a comment below. If you are interested to know more about our life and travels in Saudi Arabia, just subscribe to the channel and hit the bell.